Anyway, back to the phones. We uh, go back to Linda to Mount Laurel, New Jersey. I'm glad you waited. It's great to have you on the program. Hi. Hey, Rush. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, I think that uh, Obama is, can't pay attention to this whole thing in Brussels right now. He's on spring vacation. He's on spring break with his family. He's got games to go to and dances to go to. He can't. But he'll deal with this when he gets home. I just really feel like he's on spring break. So this is not in the forefront of his mind right now. Right, and a vacation's a vacation. And if you go on vacation, you should really just get into it. I mean, that's the whole point of a vacation. Exactly. Turn your phone off. I'm surprised he even knows this all happened. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> nah, I, I get He knows it happens. I mean, I know you're being facetious. Um, yes, I am. Totally, totally. Um, the, the, the problem is there are a lot of people in the country who would hear you, you know, this woman gets it. Our poor president is so overworked. And he committed a vacation. Guys, children there. It's their last spring break as president. You got other people who can deal with this. What can he do about it anyway? Linda, thank you. Mike in St. Louis. Thank you, sir. Hi. Hi, Rush. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I want to make a comment about this religion of peace thing. The only people that I've heard talking about religion of peace are usually uh, liberal elites and politicians. Um, I haven't seen a Muslim leaders, uh, such as they are, come forward, stand behind the president uh, at a presentation and decry this terrorism. You know, this administration... Wait, has... wait, wait. That, hold on a minute. That's a good point. The last time, like when we see the Ayatollah Khamenei, does the Ayatollah Khamenei talk about Islam as a religion of peace and... Iran as a nation of peace? No. I haven't heard him say no. that. Oh, he says, to America, that to America, that to America. You're right. The practitioners of this religion don't even call it a religion of peace. And this administration had no trouble finding a bunch of Catholic dissidents to invite to the White House when the Pope came to the country. Oh, yeah, yeah. So why can't they find Muslim leaders who will stand up by name? I've seen some half-hearted press releases and Facebook postings decrying this, but f quite frankly, I don't believe them. Well, because we don't want to make them targets in their own neighborhoods, well, and that's why they don't come forward now. Well, what, what, what I say when people talk to me about Islam being a religion of peace is I say, name one. Name one Muslim leader who come forward and decry this and say that it's against the teachings of the Quran, because... I haven't heard anybody do it. Well, but it isn't. See, that's the thing. But that's another thing. Understanding a truth about Islam apparently is as difficult as understanding a truth about communism. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. your, your point is exactly... Look, look at I hate to, This is another horse that I keep beating, but Andrew McCarthy, who has become a close friend... I'll, I'll briefly tell the story. Andy McCarthy was in the U.S. Attorney's Office, Southern District of Manhattan, when the blind shake... Omar Abdel Rahman was threatening to blow up New York City. The Lincoln Tunnel, he did engineer the first World Trade Center bombing in 1993. So it, it uh, became Andy's job to convict him. Andy conducted the trial. So as part of his prep, he read the Quran. He had to find out what, what, how, how big a kook the guy was. And the guy was advocating kooky things, recruiting people to blow up landmarks and tunnels and bridges. So he read the Quran to find out, in preparation for the trial, just what an oddball he was dealing with. And he found out that it's all in there, that the guy wasn't a kook, he was loyal. He was devout. People don't want to hear that. And, of course, you do have uh, people... Uh, Islamists and, and Muslims. No, no, no. That is an incorrect reading of the Quran. So there is argument about that. But Andy steadfastly stands by it, maintains it. Sharia, what's all in there? But just as Chris Cuomo, and who knows how many millions of others don't get it about communism, it's the same thing here. And what's happened is that if you claim, look at, look at how anti-communism gets stigmatized. If you were an anti-communist, you were a kook. You were a nut. You were a conspiracy theorist. Uh, 
and and nobody wanted to hear from you. Now you you've got an anti-communism that's so easy to fall back on. You simply are not sophisticated enough to understand exactly what's going on. If your view if communism is that, and the same thing is happening to people now who have a view of the religion of peace. If it doesn't comport with the current DOJ definition, the State Department definition of Obama, then you are the problem. Anyway, it's a good point. I'm glad you called, Mike.